Hello again, and welcome to another episode of Behind the Lava Lava. I am Johnny. I will be doing something special. I'll be co-hosting. Prez is going to be the main host. He'll be the ones kicking out some questions. This one, I'm going to learn you some knowledge. I'm just here to talk for a while because uh, homeboy's got a little cough. <laughs> We're gonna we're gonna start it off. We 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 have a couple of guests. We have a returning guest, uh, Spencer, from our last episode. We have a new one, and I'll be introducing him here in a bit. His name is Atsi Mini. I'm gonna turn the time over to him, and he's gonna introduce himself. Atsi, take it away. Awesome, hey! Thank you guys for having me. First off, I just want to say appreciate it having this opportunity to have a conversation about the different uh, different topics about myself. I am currently 31 right now. Just passed that mile marker. They go 30-30. So I was born in American Samoa, originally from the village of Sa'ili, all the way on the east side. And I grew up, I went to Funky, graduated from Funky to a high school. I was, I had the opportunity, I'm, I'm going to speak this up, you know, just a little bit. <laughs> so I graduated from Funky Kua. I had the opportunity to, to play football. I, I uh, played football in high school, did pretty good. Had the opportunity uh, to play football. But June Jones, uh, I had the opportunity to go get a full ride scholarship to play uh, at UH. Ever June Jones got fired back in 2008. Didn't know anything else, but I did four years of ROTC, JROTC in uh, Funky, and then I just joined the military. I joined the, the Navy. I was a Navy corpsman for about good old nine years. Got out in 2017. So I, I know uh, Mike E. Michael is, is a Marine. So I'm pretty sure most of you guys are familiar with uh, with Doc. And that's that's majority of my time in, in the Navy was 8404 corpsman attached to a lot of Marine units. I got out 17, I uh, used my GI Bill, got my bachelor's 2019, right before COVID. And uh, right now I'm just, uh, I'm enjoying life. I'm a, I'm, I'm a dependent right now. If you guys know what I mean, uh, my, my, wife, my wife is in the military. So we were in Hawaii. She joined in 2020, got back. She deployed to Kuwait. And now this is our first duty station here in, in good old El Paso, Fort Bliss. Yeah, that's that's a little bit about me, unless you guys have any questions. I know I kind of sped it up a little bit. I know I, I didn't want to take that nope, 40 nope, minutes. You're fine. Um, you're fine. You're fine. Yeah. But other than that, yeah, that's that's pretty much my, my history. I'm the oldest of five, by the way. Just want to put that out there. And yeah, I just love the opportunity that's been given. And I really appreciate you guys for having me. Thank you. Thank so, you. Thank you. Sweet. Well, before, I'd like to say... Uh, to you, Ati, and your wife, thank you for your service. Uh, I know a lot of us, we uh, a lot of us are, are a bunch of little devil pups, so we love Doc a lot. We appreciate Doc. So, carrying on, we're going to move on. I'm going to turn time over to Prez. Prez, you want to kick us with some knowledge? Oh, by the way, our topic to this evening is going to be about the Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month. Okay? So, yeah, Prez? So, the first question I want to pop out to everyone is, what is AAPI Heritage Month? And AAPI is Asian American and Pacific Islander. It was formerly known as Asian Pacific Islander, but when Obama stepped into office, he changed it. To me, it's basically a annual celebration of all the Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders here in the United States. And it's a month that we pay tribute to generations of Asians and Pacific Islanders who have enriched and strengthened our great nation of the United States of America. What is this month to you guys? So, okay. So it's funny because I was hanging out with Michael or with Tan the other day and he brought it up. He's like, you know, maybe we're going to talk about this. I forget the whole acronym. I was like, what's that? And, was, and then he reminded me. I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot that was this month. It's just one of those things where... I was very unfamiliar that there was even a month assigned to kind of celebrate our heritage and the heritage of Asian cultures and whatnot. First time I remember hearing about it was, was I was in Afghanistan in 2010. I was at one of the defects there, just eating my meal and how they have AFN playing on the TVs over there. We have some static old TV and they were playing some random program, but the, the military likes to inject their little infomercials in between. And so... They had something like U.S. Army is celebrating Asian Pacific Heritage Month. And I remember that was the first time I'd even heard of that. And I was like, oh, cool. We got a month too. Like I had no idea, but it was just one of those things where I never gave it a, too much thought. It's just one of those things I was not even aware was a thing until a military infomercial popped up on AFN. So that was pretty cool. And I figured 
Oh, yeah, cool. Black History Month is a February, and I guess we got a month, too. I don't know how that's integrated in the general population, but just saw it on a commercial once. Well, I my thing with Asian American Pacific Islander Month was always a celebration of where all of the the, the islands come out and they show out, they, they portray something about their culture. I know for the Polynesians, it was just like, we do our dances. And then my wife used to tell me about this. They, they had like this whole club in their high school in California. And they once a year during this, the Asian Pacific Month, they would, all the islands would, do a presentation at the high school and some of them was like the, the, the mainly it was the the polynesians and the filipinos and then they would do their dances and stuff and it was like a big old assembly and it was a huge deal every year but it was one of those things it was just like you never it was like oh, okay cool it's a it's a fun fact a little tidbit a sound bite that we can carry on with our day but i mean it's obviously it's gotten a lot turned into a lot bigger and when you think about the history of it yeah i want to say oppression a lot of it had to do with more so on the asian side than the pacific islander side yet we still were heavily included i know uh, american samoa was a strategic point during world war ii and world war one so i mean we played our part but a lot of that uh, a lot of the hardship was really felt by the other asian communities so i mean i'm not sure i don't really celebrate it uh, i'm just like oh okay cool and move on yeah, that's my little two cents on that. I'm in the line of where Morgan Freeman, he did a little, uh, I think, an interview a while ago. Uh, he said, why delegate my culture into one month? And then when I first looked on the a a API, I was like, majority of this, like, are we celebrating Asian and Pacific Islanders? Or is this like, this is one big Asian, you're talking about different countries different nationalities of Asian and then we have our small piece of Pacific Islander where it's just Hawaiians, Fiji, you know, there's there's different. So my my thing is just like what oh, Boyga Freeman said, you know, like I think it should be more inclusivity where it should be celebrated every every month. Like, it shouldn't be just one month. And and the reason why is because our, our culture, the Samoan culture, Tongan culture, different Pacific Island cultures are like it's a strategic point in World War II. One of the uh, the great battles, uh, navy naval history battle, was the the coral battle of Coral Sea, and our uh, majority of the U.S. ships were docked here in American Samoa during that time, and that and majority of the planes were flew out to you know fight in Coral Sea or Midway, for that matter. But just delegating delegating our culture to just one month is not enough. I know I just did a little random Google search. It initially started off for with one week. Somebody complained back in the day, like I think in the 1970s, started off in one week. And then I think President Cart Carter came down and said, hey, the month of May should be important because this is was the month where I think the transcontinental train where it was, was completed. And then majority of the, the Asians, they were the ones that dealt with a lot of the, uh, you know, with the whole railroad back, back in the day. And I think in 1990, that's when finally uh, President Bush delegated it to be an actual month, a heritage month, like Black History Month and other other different months. And that's that's just like my two cents in there. I, I celebrate Pacific Islander Month every day, every month, and it shouldn't be shouldn't be just one month. Just just my two cents. Thanks, guys. Uh, I'm glad you uh, brought that, that uh, Morgan Freeman thing up because I was thinking of the same quote. Because in that interview, he's like, you think you can relegate my people's entire history to one month? I like the the point that he made in that that always stood out to me and this is the one i always like to take from it is where he says black history is american history and i like to think the same when it comes to the pacific islander heritage american uh, asian american asian heritage and it's like i think sometimes maybe people think that the month is meant to be like oh this is the delegated month to okay now we'll pay attention to you and then the rest of the year is someone else is like i think the 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 sentiment of it isn't really just to be like, oh, we're correcting for errors of the past by focusing on this. It's more that we're all Americans and we're all here because and we find the, the fabric that unites us is the Constitution, that we agree, okay, here's the rules that we abide by. This is what we embrace as Americans. But the American experiment is that we're all from other places in the world. Everybody here came from somewhere else at some point. And because we're this true melting pot, aside from the constitutional values that we have, we have a diversity of backgrounds and heritages, and those are things that should be embraced and celebrated. And so it's nice to have a delegated month 
to learn about those things because I remember as a kid when uh, Black History Month would come up, there was nothing to, you know, I was just a kid. So to me, I didn't know any politics or anything surrounding that. And so for me, it was just a month where I came in and I got to learn about these cool people that did cool things. I was like, oh, like this person did this, this person did that. They contributed to civil rights and equality, et cetera. And it was just a fun month to me where I enjoyed learning about Martin Luther King and Malcolm X and everybody else. So I don't know how it's integrated. And the thing is, is aside from that, that was kind of all Black Heritage was uh, month was to me because as I got older, I'm not in school no more. I hear it mentioned. I hear it. Some companies will make a slogan, Happy Black History Month. But I mean, unless I'm going out and learning about it myself, it's not really something that affects my day to day life in the month of February. And so I don't know what happens in schools nowadays. Are children actually getting set aside? Are they learning about Polynesian figures and Asian American figures and either their struggles or their contributions? Because that I don't know. Like, I don't have kids. So I don't know if any of you guys that have children can tell me what does this month mean to your children? How does that affect their day to day lives? This is the month where I teach my children all about me and why I'm great because mm-hmm. I am, I'm Pacific Islander and I am great. I kind of just I wanted to kick back on what Spencer said. Yeah, is. is I agree because like this month is like Asian and Pacific Islander. Asia is such a big thing. Like it's just, it's just well, my teaching, what, what we're, it should, to me, it should be split. It should be Pacific Islander should have their own month. That's, that's just my, my opinion. It's just, but I understand the, the idea behind it, the concept behind it. I just, I would value another ethnic groups more and, instead of just putting them all together in that, in that concept. Yeah. And uh, thank you, Ati and Spencer for bringing up one of the points and What you guys talked about was one of the criticisms of having a heritage month, right? Having a month dedicated to a particular minority group. Yes, we show support and attention and that support and attention is only for a month and it tends to wane once the month is over. And the other thing is lumping us all into one group, consolidating us Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders into one group is and i know that the uh, the u.s government did this because they didn't know how to put a label on us especially when it comes to what you call it the u.s census right for voting and and labeling groups of people especially here in the u.s and because we're all the u.s is diverse so that's some of the criticisms this these kinds of heritage months face do you guys know of any criticisms Ooh, nice. I like that one. I believe we shouldn't get a month at all. I believe that we are, essentially, we fall under the, the, the sovereignty of, Ameri- of the United States of America. We all fall under the same flag. You have your individualisms. Your, you have your right to, to express and portray the way you want to. But like Spencer said, the U.S. is a melting pot. If you ask what the primary population in, youth in, in, in the United States is, it's everybody. You can pluck, you can find a person from every single nationality, background, race, or ethnic group in, from the entire world in the United States currently. And the United States was founded by a group of people. Or just, it's just, it wasn't just one specific race. Basically, we're all immigrants. And so when you try to, break down and give everybody a month we're gonna run out of days we gotta give them you know there's over there's over what four or five thousand countries in the in the the entire world you can find a group of people from every country in the united states no just uh, having having trying to do an entire group of people in a month is just not worth it at all it's it's a waste of time it's just trying to be like oh okay you're just a little bit more special but only on this day so kind of like how in my household, right? If it's your birthday that day, you don't have to do any chores. Everybody's going to do stuff for you. You don't have to worry about anything. It's your special day. You are special today, only today. And then the rest of the year, you're nothing. It's essentially what it says. And that's, and that's my back or my opinion on that. And that's why a lot of us don't even pay attention to it. Black History Month, 
I remember in, during my kids, my kids' schooling, and, and during the month of February, I know because it's my birthday month. My birthday's in February, and every month my kids learn in school about Black history. They they learn about Rosa Parks. They learn about Dr. Martin Luther King, you know, and all that stuff. And so, what do they learn in, during uh, AAPI? Who knows? Nobody cares. Do we need enough people to yell and scream down the street so that they can learn about what? That history is so vast between the Asian communities because Asia includes the Indians, the Punjabi. That's Asian too. It's not just... And then when you talk about Pacific Islanders, that encompasses the Philippines, Indonesia, Micronesia, Melanesia. It's all South Pacific. So... Which islands are we going to choose? We're going to pick and choose here. We're going to pick and choose there. Mainly, I know mainly we're focusing on the U.S. and its territories and our allies. So I don't think we all need a month. I don't think we need just uh, appreciate the country on July 4th. Show your pride and let's move on. Doesn't it seem a little dangerous to give each minority group their own month? Because it first started with the Black community. Then it moved on to the Latino Hispanic community. Now it's Asian Pacific Islanders. Now we don't know what the future holds. What if other minority groups start wanting their own month? There's not enough. Well, months. the dichotomy of that whole situation is that the African American history is a stain in the history of the United States. African American history is, is American history. And that's a stain with over 200 years of slavery and segregation, the whole separate but equal, into our own lifetimes. That was happening in some of our lifetimes and some of our next or previous generation's lifetimes as well. Like your parents was alive during segregation era. So like that is influenced and that could be a little bit more, that's a little bit more of a sensitive topic that, okay, cool. Now, Asian American history I'm going to be honest, most of that's the mistreatment of the Asian community here in the United States during World War II with the, with the Japanese. We went to war and the, the bombing of Pearl Harbor and concentration camps for the Japs. A lot of the, the heavy immigration rates with the, with the Indians and the Sikhs and the Chinese, when they all came here during that time, they were persecuted as well. So there, it's the deep root for the Asian community in American history is a lot deeper than the Pacific Islanders. We were just uh, relegated to minor skirmishes and we had a small part to play. Yes, in, in, in our sense, it was, it was huge. It was everything. We gave everything we could, but in the grand scheme of things, it was a minute speck. We were a fob in, in every sense of the word. We were a fob in, in the operation. We weren't the main campaign. We put forth our best foot and we gave it our all. Now, do we deserve a month? Cool. If they give us one, that's cool. If they lump us in with everybody else, because yeah, you, you look at that census form, you have black, white, Hispanic, not Hispanic. And then just recently within the last, what, 20 years is when they started integrating the whole native Hawaiian or Pacific Islander. Before it was just all, we were all Asian or other. And so Let me answer I mean, your question. It, it ain't dangerous at all to give minorities recognition if they ask for it. Just look at the impact these months have right now. I mean, if people are like, oh, it's dangerous. We keep handing out these months. Like, you sound like an old racist blockhead. I mean, <laughs> we're over here talking about how May doesn't really do anything for us. And then we're going to pose that question. Is it dangerous? Hell no. Give them the recognition that they want it. And as long as everything's respectful, people aren't being hurt and in, intruding on others' rights and privileges, by all means, celebrate the background of where you come from. Remember your roots always, because that's how it's woven into this American fabric. Right? A lot of this, I mean, that's what it is. May is May. Uh, I'm glad it actually puts us on a little spotlight to where people recognize us as Samoans instead of Somalians. Hey, yeah, yeah. It's uh, I, no, I get that all the time when, when I try to tell people like we're like, what are you? I'm like, um, half white, half Samoan. What? Samoan? I'm like, no. Nah. It usually <laughs> just so like soft. goes down the trail of like of like uh you know Hawaii, kind of like that. But uh, I see where you're both 
but I, I see where you're both coming from because when it comes to heritage months, I am of two minds of it because, because Johnny, like what you were saying with, are we going to give everybody a month? I'm like, yeah, maybe it's a little hyperbolic to say that it's, it's dangerous, but I think at some point we get, if we're going to acknowledge everybody, we are going to run out of months and we can break it down by week, by weeks or whatnot. And we're going to run out of weeks because the world is a very diverse thing. And at some point, maybe people don't want to be lumped in. But then, like I said, I'm of two minds of it because I see where you're coming from, T. Because when I think of my understanding of historical black figures or black heritage, I, I always, it takes me back to the classroom in elementary school when this was because of that month, I got to learn about these figures that undoubtedly impacted American history. And so I guess the, what I'm more cautious of is I'm hoping that what, what I'm cautious of with anything, when you try to lump it into something official, like federally or whatnot, is that I don't want our culture or heritage to be another battleground for political points where politicians are going to weaponize it to be like, oh, vote for me because I'm the one who's trying to advocate for you to get your own week or something Bandering. like that. I'm like, yeah. it's like, take that that bullet out of your, your weapon. You want to talk about policies and issues, do it, but don't make my heritage just another talking point so you can make promises you won't deliver on or may have no intention to. It's like, I just, I get skeptical about anything official like coming from government or whatnot. So I said, but I do see the value in both where it's like, let's not get carried away and saying that these heritage months are only here to reconcile mistreatment. It is, I think it is a good thing to acknowledge people and their cultures and where they come from because we're all Americans here and we come from different places and maybe we can understand our neighbors a little bit better. But at the same time, I guess I hope people don't get too political with it, you know? Or they're going to get political with it. Yeah. Well, and actually, uh, along with what you were saying, too, is like we get lumped in all the time. But the thing is, is the, the odd thing about lumping Asians and Pacific Islanders together is, first of all, like you said, Asians are a very large and diverse group among themselves. Pacific Islanders the same. But the odd thing is, is it doesn't end with heritage months. We get lumped in with each other for all sorts of things, especially when it comes to affirmative action issues. They set a bar at colleges that you got to, if you're in this category, we expect you to score this many points to get admission. Well, Asians and, and Pacific Islanders do not score similarly on that spectrum, but we are held to that spectrum or to the point. But it, it's like, that's such a large group to, with, with a lot of people to just be like, okay, you all need to be hit at this mark. But that doesn't just apply to colleges. It applies everywhere that affirmative action and, policies are put into place, work, government, et cetera, we're usually always lumped in with some other group. And that's a little off topic. That doesn't have to do with Heritage Month, so I apologize. No, uh, no. No, that's good. Yeah. You guys have any other thoughts? Well, I, I could probably throw in a little two cents in there, too. I agree uh, that it is not dangerous. And the reason why it's not dangerous at all is because, for one fact, if we're going to – if say we didn't never had Heritage Month, right? It's going to be on the individual part. It's going to be on Johnny's part. It's going to be on all of our parts to just try to educate the public. And then when I saw, when I first initially kind of went back and looked into this, I was like, man, this is probably an I'm sorry month, pretty much, if I really looked at it. Like Black History Month, I'm sorry, Blacks. Asian Pacific, I'm sorry. This is it's like a way of saying apologizing to ethnic groups. If, if, and if you really didn't notice, majority of these months are for minorities and we're all the minority in this country. However it may be, toss salad, or melting pot. Initially, if they're going to say, I'm sorry, I might as well take it to the you know full full side. You know, I just said my wife is dancing in one of their API months here in, in El Paso. And when I was there, a lot of the, the people there didn't even know about Samoa. They didn't know about Tungans or Pacific. So I did my part to try to educate them as best as I can. And although... This is just a time where I could be proud or whatever, but I'm always proud of my culture and heritage 24 seven. But for majority of the population, the melting pot here in the United States, when I was stationed in the, in the East coast, everybody thought I was Mexican. So I kind of did, I mean, if I came down to it and I trying to educate them one by one, you know, I'm like, Hey, it's gonna, it's gonna take years, but I guess I could 
be thankful that we do have a little sliver of the pot where he delegated to us to at least, hey, this is uh, where everybody could recognize here in the United States. That's my only thing is that there's is Asian and Pacific, you know, it's just we're lumped together with, with Asian and all, all, although, you know, that's a, that's a, the big concept in, in the greater big scheme of things where we got to try our best at, at least uh, try to educate the populace during this time. We're kind of close on time here. So uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and close it out with that. Stay tuned for part two episode. We're going to do a part two on this to continue on. My name is Johnny. I'll be, I'm your co-host. This is Prez and this is the boys. Uh, this is Behind the Lava Lava. We'll catch you next time.